Hello, I'm Jim Shaughnessy, and SIO 3 d Sports would like to welcome you to how Andy Murray can make it to number one. First of all, he's got to get past this man, who doesn't look like he's going away anytime soon. In 2009, Djokovic decided to improve his serve and his volley game, so he got a new coach and completely modified his serve. Now, not only is it reliable, but it is a weapon. The irony is Andy Murray is now in the same position and he desperately needs to improve his second serve. The problem with Murray's second serve, it oftentimes lands short and slow. His opponents immediately attack this ball and put him on the defensive. Luckily, he is a master escape artist. Combine that with Andy Murray's brilliant returning skills, and you have the number three player in the world, almost number one. Murray's worked through a myriad of Grand Slam caliber coaches, yet they cannot see what is invisible. Here today, we will reveal the invisible. Andy Roddick was chosen as the comparison model for Andy Murray. This is justified by the fact that Andy Roddick has a career 56% win percentage on his second serve. Concomitantly, Roddick has the defensive skills neither of Djokovic nor of Murray. Our mission today is to determine the factors that cause Andy Murray's serve to land short and slow. We start with the truth. The truth is what is the racket head doing at impact? This is what causes the ball to go where it goes, how it goes. We measure velocity of the racket head in three ways. Forward velocity towards the target, upward velocity towards the sky, and lateral velocity towards the side or along the baseline. Additionally, the angle of the racket face at impact gives the ball a trajectory. Since depth is an issue in Andy Murray's second serve, we are interested in the vertical trajectory. SIO 3D Sports has been studying and processing data on Andy Murray's second serve since 2009. In September 2013, after winning Wimbledon, Murray underwent a minimally invasive spinal disc surgery. This caused a few technique changes that left the previous studies irrelevant at this point. We will study two serves from Andy Murray after he was back in top form in August of 2014 at an ATP Tour 1000 event right before the US Open. Additionally, we will study Andy Roddick in top form in 2010 at the same tournament. From here on out, Andy Roddick will be the yellow model and Andy Murray will be the white model. We will compare the body serve to the body serve and the kick serve to the kick serve. First, let's look at the truth about the body serves. The player's racket heads are traveling with an X velocity that is headed towards their target of about the same amount, 70.53 miles an hour versus 70.38 miles an hour. The upward velocity Roddick is almost 5 miles an hour faster, so he will get more of a component of topspin. The lateral velocity, Murray, is three times faster than Roddick, creating a lot more side spin. This will slow the ball down. Also, let's look at the outgoing vertical trajectory. Murray, with a negative 5, is hitting downward more than Roddick with a negative 4.33. So, Murray's ball has more spin, it's going to go slower, it's going to curve more, and it's going out with a vertical trajectory that is lower, therefore it is going to land shorter in the box, going slower. Next, let's take a look at the add box serves, placed out wide to the backhand. We see that Roddick is 4 miles an hour faster. We see that Roddick's X velocity is faster. We see that the upward velocity of the racket which creates topspin, is pretty much the same. But then again, we see that the lateral velocity, Murray is putting much more of a spin 
that is sidewards on the ball. This is slowing the ball down. Then we also see that Murray is hitting the ball down almost three and a half degrees more than Roddick. Therefore, the ball will land short because it's going slower with more spin. Therefore, it's less effective. Let's remind ourselves of the original goal here. It's to get Andy Murray to the number one ranking. To do that, he must play better against Djokovic in Grand Slams. And his winning percentage on his second serve points is only 41% whereas Djokovic's winning percentage is 55% against Murray. That is too huge of a difference. So we need to get Murray to be more consistent and more effective on his second serve. So let's look at the causes of Murray's lower ball trajectory since that causes the ball to land short. When we put the players side by side, it is very obvious that Murray's toss is much higher and therefore coming down faster. Murray's ball drops 22 inches further than Roddick's into impact. In Murray's defense, however, he is meeting the ball higher than Roddick by 10 to 12 inches. This has its advantages. By doing this, Murray has a larger window for success than Roddick. As we move around to the side, we see that Roddick tilts his right and left shoulder back into a more severe cartwheel position. I have removed the rib cages and the legs and the arms so that we can look more clearly at the pelvis and the white bars at the top are the shoulder segment. We can see Roddick starting in a more tilted position but Murray ending up in a more tilted position. Murray's shoulders are pointed down further than Roddick's. However, in the end, Murray actually cartwheels his shoulder further than Roddick, but he ends up in an inefficient position with both his shoulders lower than Roddick. Let's put the bones back in and have a look at what Roddick's left shoulder is doing at impact. It's coming down just a tiny fraction, whereas Murray is coming down seven times faster than Roddick with his left shoulder, down and to the left. Same thing with the other serve. On this one, the shoulder is coming down four times faster than Roddick, down and to the left. So let's remember that Murray starts in a less than efficient cartwheel loading position it's not as good as Roddick and then Murray gives himself plenty of time to over rotate to try to catch up and build up that cartwheel force with that extra high toss there is another extremely important reason that that left shoulder is dropping so fast and we shall see it now what we are focusing on here is the fact that Andy Roddick's left knee gets bent much more than Andy Murray later in the swing and then it will straighten out quicker even though it is bent 14 degrees further on the slice and 18 degrees further on the kick. What does that mean? It means Andy Roddick has a much more powerful and quick angular velocity of knee extension. In fact it is 250 degrees per second faster than Andy Murray with his left knee. When we look at right knee extension, we find the numbers to be the same, except if you look at this video and see that Murray is not really getting much of a push off that right foot. Let's see it again. He moves his foot up and appears to get on the tips of his right foot toes and then doesn't really blast off of them. But his knee does extend quickly, but he doesn't get the benefit of that push. If we look at Andy Roddick's right leg, and more specifically his right foot, we see a solid plant on the ball of his foot and a solid push off with the right leg. So we see Murray getting a weaker push from the left leg than Roddick and possibly a weaker push from the right leg. And the result of this is 
The center of gravity of the body is not blasted upward. Here we have the center of gravity traced, and we can see the anti-rotic center of gravity path looks more like a sharp mountain peak, and Andy Murray's look like a rolling hill due to the lack of leg drive. So this transfers to the right hitting shoulder. Andy Murray's hitting shoulder is coming down at negative 23.95 inches per second and negative 13.63 inches per second while Roddick is going up 9.71 inches per second and 17.5 inches per second. Roddick's hitting shoulders going up, Murray's hitting shoulders going down. Roddick's forward movement of his hitting shoulder is far greater than Andy Murray's. He's going forward at 140 degrees per second. I'm sorry, 140 inches per second, and, Rot and Murray is going forward at only 93 inches per second. Another way to hammer home this point of leg drive is that Roddick's center of gravity at impact is going upward 10 times faster than Murray's. Inadequate leg drives and shoulder velocities that are going downward and a ball toss velocity that's going downward very fast all can contribute to the difficulty of getting the proper trajectory on the ball but in the end it is the racket face that has the most influence on ball trajectory the biggest factor in Andy Murray's lower ball trajectories and short serves is the fact that he tosses the ball and impacts the ball 18 inches further inside the court and 14 inches further inside the court on these serves than Andy Roddick. To make the same trajectory as Roddick, Murray's wrist would have to be less flexed and that would cause his ball to go even slower, so he doesn't do that. But since his center of gravity is going up far less and his shoulders are coming down, it makes it much more of a strain for Murray to get upward velocity on his racket. This does not bode well in terms of either speed on the ball or injury. I have not touched on the biomechanical deficiencies of Murray compared to Roddick in terms of creating the ball speed he needs to make his second serve better. I like Andy Murray and I like his coaches, but it is not my business to let them have the whole pie for free. I believe improving these things that we've talked about today will get Murray closer and perhaps to number one. Good luck Andy. I'm Jim Shaughnessy, founder of Sio 3 d Sports and if you like the way that I have analyzed Murray's game just think what I can do for your game. Please get in touch with me at jim at sio3dsports.com. Good day.